Hi, and welcome to the outdoor studio. I am working outdoors because the original plan when I moved in here was I was going to build a little studio. This is the upper terrace of my garden. And shelter in place. Just can't do that right now. So I decided to go ahead and set up and work. Um, so I have my wheel on a my wheel and I have it on an extension cord which I am taking up and putting away every day so that I don't have to worry about some critter chewing on it and um, it's it's working it's kind of nice being outdoors I just have to be careful about not having too much stuff fall in my in my slip leaves and stuff but it's not bad so what I'm going to show you today is making shoulders. This is the question that has been coming up, is bottles, uh, rounded forms, they're, they're hard to throw. So let's think about how to do it. And I'm going to start with a, uh, I'm going to start with one that's, that's really almost like a globe shape. And I think from there we can go to taller bottles. But Let's start with figuring out how to get a shoulder to work. And the weird thing about this computer camera is that it reverses everything. So you're going to see my wheel going the wrong direction. <laughs> but anyway, it'll be right other than that, I hope. <laughs> I hope. All right, so here we go. And it is so hard to tell where this camera is. Oh, it's bright out here and it makes the screen almost invisible. But I think we're centered. So um, I have some clay here. This is clay that I recycle. And uh, I'm going to show you guys. I'll be sending... Uh, those of you who are my students, I'll be sending you photos showing you how you can recycle at home. So this clay is in great shape and this was all just recycled from my slops um, that I dried on a, on a pad of, uh, of old cloth. So it's been well wedged, you always want to wedge well, and now I'm ready to start throwing. Turned on. Goes, yay. All right, so I'm going to start by centering this piece. It always helps to know what shape you're going to make, right? Um, when we sit down, we don't want to just be zoned out, <laughs> right? We got to really think about it because if you don't know what shape you're going to make. You won't do the right steps in the right order. But of course everything starts with centering. Now I'm using a white clay and white clay is much more persnickety and if you're just starting to learn how to work with white clay. Give yourself some time to, for the learning curve because it, it feels different. It's, it's mushier. It's not as responsive. But colors look really good on it. So underglazes and glazes are really beautiful on white clay and that's why we use it. Just, mm, it's not quite there. And that's another thing about working with white clay is you really want to be sure that you're well centered because if you're a little bit off, oh, it just will drive you crazy, especially with bowls. Bowls out of white clay can really drive you nuts because if they're a little bit off center, you can't trim them. Well, they'll be thinner on one side, and then not the 
everything works right. And it also goes for how you're drying them. So if you're uh, if you're making bowls, but especially if you're making bowls out of white clay, be sure that you're drying them evenly. Don't let one side dry faster than the other. Now what I'm seeing here is that it's just, it's really hard to get it perfectly centered. I, I'm feeling like I have it for, for a minute and then I don't have it. And sometimes if you just change your speed, you can correct that problem. I have a feeling this, I might not have wedged this clay quite enough because it's just a little bit resistant to centering. So what I'm doing now is working some more slip into it and this slip that is on your hands is really good stuff so don't just go throwing that away keep working that into your clay because that's where the plasticity of your clay comes from and if you keep taking it away the clay is going to get stiffer and stiffer okay this is better now so when I was talking about like have your shape in mind, you really got to know what shape you're going to make because the steps are different for different shapes. So this shape is going to be rounded, right? It's going to be globular kind of. Uh, it, it'll be a little bit more upright and then a shoulder. So we're going to really think about how to make that shoulder. Uh, the bottom of it is thrown like a bowl. So you know that a bowl has to have extra clay for support down at the bottom. So I'm going to set that shape up right now. First thing I'm doing is getting the floor. You want to always be sure that your floor is done before you go on because if you try to go back and fix it later, it will throw everything off. So I'm going back and forth. I'm thinking about how this form is going to be when it's all trimmed. It's going to be narrower at the bottom than it will look when I first throw it because it's going to have a lot of supporting clay under there. So I'm thinking about it from the inside and I'm setting up what that inside width is going to be. It's only about that wide inside. And now I'm going to bring it out as if it was going to be a bowl. So I'm going about halfway. A little outward slant. It can be more slanted later, but we don't want to do it. We don't want to stress the clay, so we'll try to keep this a little more upright in the very beginning. And I'm also just slowing my wheel down a little bit. So anytime you're getting to a something that doesn't that's not easy, <laughs> it's good to slow your wheel down. And take your time and be sure you're getting everything accurate. So I'm trying to get this wall very even. I want to get the inside shape completely established so that line inside is really clear. I don't want to have to go back and change it. So now the inside is, is like this and the outside is more like that because a lot of this clay is there for support. It's going to come off later but it's really important to have it there now because the clay is not that strong and it, you keep sending it out this way it's going to flop. So that clay underneath is holding it. Now I have got about halfway up the wall and now this is different from your usual cylinder. I'm going to bring the sh I'm going to start bringing that shoulder in in the process of thinning the wall. So here we go. Normally we would thin a wall pretty straight up or a little bit slanted in, but we're going to do it a lot slanted in. Remember that you're dealing with centrifugal force. If you're bringing a wall outward, it's much more likely to flop. 
if you're bringing it inward, it's a lot safer. So now I've got my base set up. I've got the shoulder already started. I'm going to leave the rim just a little bit thicker so I can do something else with it later. This wall is still fairly thick. And now I'm going to bring it up a little more. A little bit taller. And now I'm going to bring that shoulder in. So the whole time you're feeling for thick and thin, you're trying to not have any areas that are weak. It's a common problem when people try to do a shoulder that they haven't left enough clay and it starts to collapse in the shoulder. And that's why I think it's really helpful to start your shoulder early on. So it's already pretty much there. And now I'm going to create that more of a globe shape. So, uh, and that's why I thought, let's start with a little wider pot because it's easier to get in there. I want to be sure that I still got a good line inside. So I'm going to check and see what is there and try and go back and really make sure that well established. I'm slowing the wheel down using a sponge to keep a little bit of water going on the outside. You should always be tightening up your lip. I always keep track of what's happening on the top of your pot. Um, I see a lot of people having to cut the top over and over again because they come up crooked and that's from coming up too fast. Give your pot time to get all the way around. And I'm just going back and adjusting the shape getting a little more rounded and I'm going to bring this mouth in a little bit more. Now, once it's out, it's hard to get it back in. So I may or may not be able to get it in a little farther. I'll try. This is tricky. If you do this too fast, it's going to ripple. So let's see what happens here. collapsing a little bit. That's interesting. Okay. I'm not sure I got it in any farther. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Mm, yeah. <laughs> this is tricky. Um, remember that you don't want water in the bottom. So this is the fancy tool. That, I don't know how much this costs. Somebody gave me this. This is the one I like. So it's just a skewer with a piece of foam rubber and a rubber band. <laughs> but it's small enough I can get it in there. This may be about as far as I can go with this one. Uh, now something I like to do on a shouldered pot, I like to make the shoulder really, really rounded. So I'll use a rib. Um, some people find it hard to hang on to these ribs. Sometimes if you just get the slip off of it, it's easier. And I'm bending it. And it's snugged right up. Right up against the pot. Okay, It's not going to work if you go this way. You've got to wrap it around the pot. Another nice tool, this is made by Mud Tools. These are these very flexible, the red ones are the really flexible. They have them in different uh, hardnesses. 
and the red ones are the ones I really like to use for this purpose because they're very easy to bend and very easy to hang on to. And I'm able to get this mouth to go in just a little bit more, which is nice. Okay, so there we go. And now <laughs> I have barely enough clay left to do a little bit of a of a mouth. I'm just gonna see if I can bring that clay up just a little bit. This is like just this is like raising a cylinder. I'm just putting a little pressure on each side of it. Yeah, I can't go very far with this. And see it's dipping a little bit. So that's when you see that, that's telling you it's time to stop. <laughs> but I am gonna try to just smooth it out with my chin. Yeah, see it's starting to collapse. So what do you do when your shoulder starts to collapse? Well, sometimes you can bring it back up. Let's, let's try. Sometimes they'll do it, sometimes they won't. This one is gonna do it. There we go. So that's, it's still a little lopsided. That means it's, when I turn it over to trim, it's gonna be a little, slightly wonky. So here's a good way to deal with bottle forms, sh shoulder forms that are going to be hard to trim. Do your trimming now with your fettling knife. Use your sharp edge of the fettling knife and slow, don't try to take too much at, a, at one time. We're going to slowly remove the excess clay. Now we can't remove every bit of that support clay or the pot will collapse but we can take off quite a lot of it and you know you could let your pot just be finished this way it'll be nicer to take more of it off it'll give it a more a lighter look it's just like with bowls, you know, if you leave all that support clay on, you have a very heavy looking bowl. And if you take more of it off, you get this lovely lightness. I'm going to take off as much as I dare now. It's surprising how much you can actually take off. You're going to use the sharp side of your fettling. So, um, if I was going to have more of a neck on this pot, it would have been important to start that earlier. It's just, there's only so much you can do, and then you just have to stop. And the more you throw, the more you become sensitive to the needs of your clay and what it's willing to do and what it just can't do. And you just know when to stop. Um, I mean, it's one of the things that when you look at really good thrown pots, you know, they just have this freshness about them. That freshness is from not overworking them. It's from a uh, you know, the potter understanding what they were trying to make, they understood all of the steps that they needed to go through, and they just did it and stopped. <laughs> you just gotta know when to quit in this world. Okay, so here, this is ready to come off the wheel now. And if I had been really smart, I would have thrown it on a bat because then I wouldn't risk damaging it, getting it off. So, fingers crossed here. This happens to me every time I do a demo. I, I get about halfway through and I realize what I should have done. <laughs> oh well. Uh, something that'll make it a little bit easier to pick it up is to pull some water through underneath.
describe this you know there's so many things it's like what are the words for this um, I'm putting my pressure if you can call it that it's not even pressure really but where I'm putting the real contact is right down there that's the strongest part of the pot that's still got quite a bit of clay down there if I put any pressure up here I'm gonna damage it so my fingers are there just for balance they're barely touching Okay, and this, uh, yeah, there's a lot of clay under here. Um, I mean, for it to be able to hold its shape like this, there's quite a lot of clay there. So I will turn this over and trim it when it's really hard. Okay, next is a bottle shape. So, let me get some clay. I want to show you the wedging technique, so let me move things here. Okay, uh, so this is spiral wedging, and all I'm doing is pressing with the heel of my hands, rolling it back towards me, and giving it a quarter turn. That's the same motion every time. This is a really nice way to wedge. Oh god, it's shaking the table. Sorry about that. Uh, it's a nice way to wedge. It keeps the clay in one compact mass so that it's almost ready to go on the wheel right now. So in order to get a nice little cone shape, I'm going to rotate it around this point. This hand is doing this. I'm pressing all of the little lines out so that it becomes compact. So we have a nice little cone. The bottom is almost totally flat. Round that a little bit. It's going to stick better on the wheel if it's rounded than if it's perfectly flat. So it will give it something more to connect. And now I'll get it on the wheel and Okay, let's see. Uh, I can't really tell <laughs> if it's okay. I think it's yes. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna make a bottle. to get rid of these globs of clay that are kind of in the way down on the wheel head. I want to be able to get my hands right in there. I'm sure you're using your all of your fingers. So your your pinkies have to work. And again, we want to be sure that we're really centered. 
the taller and narrower things are, the more you've got to be right on. Just going to change my speed a little bit. Sometimes that is the ticket to getting things centered. So all of these slops are going to get recycled. I'm going to let them slip settle. When it's thoroughly settled, I'll pour off the water and recycle all of that. So this is going to be a taller shape. It doesn't have to be quite so wide. And usually bottles are flat across the bottom. So again, you're thinking about the finished shape because you want the walls to be even all the way around. So you're designing the interior so that it will match the exterior. Now I felt the clay just slightly off-center, but if you're really steady, if it's just slightly off, you should be able to correct it, but only slightly off. If it's very much off, just keep working on it till you've got it centered. Now this is a different situation because it's not a bowl shape at the bottom, it's going straight up. throwing cylinders here. So this bottle is going to come outward a little bit. It's going to be about like that. But for starters, you want to take it straight up. And we have a little different issue here with the the bottle and actually this would apply to that more of a globe shape if you were going to give it a neck. If you were going to give it a neck, it's good to get that neck started now. If you think about what happens here, as the wall gets thinner, there's more torque if you have to squeeze it hard up here. And a lot of times we lose pots because we're squeezing this upper wall and suddenly the pot ripples or collapses and that's because there's we have to use so much pressure and the wall has gotten weak down here so let's thin first up here and then when we have to come back and make that neck we don't have to use so much pressure this gets a little bit tricky doesn't it getting way down there. Be sure you're linking your hands. You may hit a depth where you can't link your hands. So let's see what happens then. I'm going to be going down inside one more time. I'd like to get this wall taller and there's plenty of clay uh, to do it, so I might as well. And I'm going to have to separate my hands. Be sure that anything that's going to touch the clay is lubricated. So you've got to stay really, really steady. I'm going to slow my wheel down a little bit. Uh, this is why you want to have your foot on the pedal, because you may suddenly need to slow down. Okay, as soon as you can, you link your hands. So if you have to do that, you've got to be really, really steady. Um, one way to stay more steady is to have your arm against your body. It's awkward, but 
Now, the more you can steady yourself, the better. Okay, I think I've got it tall enough now. And now I want to make that shape. So I'm going to flare it out a little bit. So your inside hand is there for support and also pushing the clay out to make the shape. So I'm going to start at the bottom sure that this line is continuous. So feel what's going on on the inside. You don't want to have a big thick area, so check and see what's going on in there. So again, my shoulder is already kind of started. It's not an afterthought. It, it's part of the whole plan. Now's the time to get Play out of the uh, slip out of the bottom because pretty soon it won't be possible. Oh, where's my stick? Where's my stick? I'll use this one. I think I can get it. Ugh. I think I can get in there. Whoa. <laughs> I don't like that. Okay, I'm just going to do it. Now, it's not particularly good that this mouth spread out. So let's bring that in. So here's the part that makes bottles challenging. Coloring in the neck. Be sure that you haven't gotten it too thin in the shoulder. This is often what happens, uh, you know, we, we don't, don't leave enough clay up there. So let's figure out exactly where that shoulder is going to be. Be sure that you're always moistening your rib before you touch it to your clay so it doesn't grab. Okay, here, here we go. I'm going to collar. Now, there's different ways to collar. This is one way. I'm just scrubbing around it. Another way is six points. Some clay bodies will be a lot more cooperative than others. And the white clays tend to be really reluctant to collar in like this. So you have to go really slowly and gradually. Go, even if you want the top to flare, you should go all the way in like this, because you can flare it back out. But if you have it flared before you get it collared in, it's going to just try to dance. It's not going to work very well. Now, what I just did was I thinned it a little bit. The coloring process makes the wall get thicker. And as it gets thicker, it gets more resistant to collaring. Besides, we don't want a big, heavy neck. So every once in a while, you're coming back and thinning it out. And you're also making it a little taller in this process. Now, it is getting uneven in the top, and that's just part of collaring. I am going to have to cut that. <coughs> so how tiny do you want the neck? You know, you can just keep going. 
and actually uh, for throwing a closed shape, you would just keep going until it closes. It's a delicate operation, so just give it time. Be sure that you're allowing the wheel to turn all the way around as you go up. And now I'm going to cut it. Find my needle. Where's my needle? There we go. A little bit of water. Okay, so I want to bring that, I like it to have a little more graceful connection here, so I'm going to just come down a little lower, collar it a little farther down. So this is a very advanced project. <laughs> so, so if you're trying it and it's like, ah, oh, that's okay. <laughs> it's, it's just not that easy. But it's a wonderful shape. I'm making that shoulder really round here. So, getting there. Where's my stick? Well, now, I'm going to do some of that trimming because this is a shape that, unless you have a chuck, forget trying to trim this. You're not going to turn it upside down on the wheel. Um, so, and it's fine to use a chuck. Um, the best way is to throw the chuck at the same time as your pot and work with the chuck leather hard. So I can show you that on another video. But right now, I'm trying to save myself some trouble and do all the trimming right now. And this was a technique I learned from Janice Rowell. Um, and I just thought, oh, this is brilliant. So I'm using the sharp side of my fiddling knife. Take a little at a time. Don't go too fast or you're going to lose your pot. And I'm looking at it from the side and making sure that there's a nice blend in this line. It's not just a you know, weird angle or something. Yeah, she, she was making really tall bottles and, and then trimming them this way. So if you're careful, you can really take a lot of clay off the bottom. Don't forget to use your chamois on the rim. And there we go. There's a bottle. I'm going to just take a tiny bevel from the bottom. And 
all the trimming is done. I like to get my wheel nice and clean before I throw something else. And of course, at the end of the day, get everything clean while it's nice and soft and easy to do. Now, I think my walls are thick enough. I should be able to pick this up. We're going to find out. If you dry your hands off, it's a lot easier to pick up the clay. So remember your holding from here. Give it a twist. And there it comes. Um, because I'm outdoors, I really don't want this to dry in the sun. It would dry way too fast up around the rim and we'd end up with a crack in the bottom. And same thing with the other one. I'm going to get it out of the sun and uh, as soon as I can I'll turn this one I can't turn over, but the other one I'll turn over to get the bottom to dry out. But mostly you want to control the drying, so you want to, um, if, you're, if you're really just watching things, it's okay to have it sitting in the sun for a little while, then turn it so that you're getting all sides evenly dried. But your best bet is to dry in, the, in shade. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for being here, and I hope this all recorded.